All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at inheritance in Java. Inheritance is a way of building classes on top of other classes. And in a way, it reduces the amount of code that we have to write, and it helps us organize our code um, so that it has a nice structure to it. It's also going to lead us into polymorphism, which is a very powerful and very useful feature of any object-oriented programming language. So with that in mind, let's create a new class. Classes don't have to be in separate files, but it's common to put them in separate files. So in NetBeans, you can just right click on your project, click on new, and then click on Java class. I am going to call this class item and the package I chose to call this inheritance. So I will put that right there and it's going to give me a new file in my project that is part of the same package so that I can use it in other places in my project. So I'm going to create this class with the video game in mind, just a generic video game that uses items. And we're going to put some member variables in here and then we will look at how we can inherit those variables into other classes. So this is item, just generic item. We're going to have a name. We're going to have a value. And that will be enough for right now. It's common in Java to make these variables private. You don't have to do that, but this is probably the standard convention industry standard to make everything private and then to make getter and setter methods to access these variables. I personally don't like doing it that way, but it is the industry standard. Let's also create a constructor for our class. We'll have a default constructor that just sets some generic values for our variables. We'll just say that our name is default and our value is zero. And then I will create a two argument constructor to set those values to specific values. So the programmer can pass those in. We'll have a name and a value. Inside here we can say this name equals name and this value equals value. This is a reference variable to the current object. So anywhere you have created an item, uh, when these constructors are creating that item, that specific item, this is a reference variable to the current item or whatever item that is being created. Uh, we use the word this to let the computer know that this value on the left side of the equal sign is referring to our class variable and the one on the right side of the equal sign is referring to this variable. They have the same name and we're going to use this one to set that one but they are actually two different variables with two different places in memory. We're also going to create a display function. We're going to use that to show our values and we'll put a label on there. And that should be good there. If you want, you could write your getters and setters for these guys, or you can have NetBeans to do it for you. You can just click where you want them, right click, and then there's an option here to generate code, insert code. And we'll click getter and setter. And you just click the variables that you want to generate getters and setters for, and click generate. And we'll write all those guys in there for you. Remember with classes and private variables, we're going to use a public function to access these private variables. If it's private, it can only be accessed by this class. All right, there's our generic item and we're going to expand on that. I'm going to create another class. And you could do this in a new file, or you can just keep writing in the same file. To keep it simple, I'm going to keep writing in the same file. 
and this class will be called weapon. And I want my weapon to be an item. And that's a good rule of thumb. Anytime you're using inheritance, your subclass should be a base class. You should be able to say a weapon is an item. A apple is an item. Uh, but to implement that inheritance, we're gonna write extends and then write the name of the class you want to inherit from. So class weapon extends item. And my class is automatically going to have all of these functions and all of these variables that the item class has. But weapon needs a few things of its own that are not specific to every item. They're only specific to weapon. And so we're going to add one of those and we're going to say that is damage. I'll create two constructors here as well. We'll have our default constructor that will just set the damage to some default value. I'll set it to one. And then we will create a three argument constructor. And the number of arguments is up to the programmer, but three seems good here. We're gonna have one that sets the name and the value and the damage. Now this is where we're gonna start saving on code. I could write out everything I've written up here, and it's only two lines, but sometimes your classes can get really long and this could be several lines. But instead of writing this out here, I'm just going to call this constructor and let it write it for me. And in Java, the way you do that is to write super, and then you're going to write name and value in there. When you use the super keyword, it is a reference to your base class. It takes you up one level. So we came from item. Super is a reference to item. If you're going to use your base class constructor, super has to be the first line in your constructor. So that will take care of our name and value. And then we can set the damage the same way we did above. This damage equals damage. I'm not going to bother with the private and getter and setters. Um, I've already shown you how to do that. To keep it simple, I'm going to avoid using that from here on out. We'll add a display method here. I can use super again. Call the display from above. And that will show the name and value. And then I will put a print statement here. And this will show the variables that are specific to this class. And so there's inheritance in a nutshell. We could add more classes. We could extend more items. We could have consumables. We could have tools. We could have armor. We could have quest items. There's all sorts of things we can extend from item. There's no limit to the number of classes that can be extended from a base class. Or we could continue ext extending from weapon if we wanted to. Let's just say I want to make a class for a sword. So class sword extends weapon. And if I wanted to, I could put specific variables for the sword. Or I can just make this a, a specific version of weapon. It doesn't have to have any variables of its own. It can just set up some default values so that I can create a sword and it is a weapon with preset values. So I'm just gonna do it that way. I'll create my default constructor here and it's gonna call the weapon constructor. And I'll just put some default values in here. So we can say this is um, iron sword. has a value of 30 and it has a damage of 10. Sorry, there should not be a dot there. And then if I wanted to, I could create a three argument constructor so the programmer can set these values himself. We'll pass in those same things, the name, the value, 
damage. And I'll use super again and just pass in name value damage. So now we have some default values and then we have some custom set values. And you can continue this trend as far as you want to. You could derive more classes from sword. Uh, you could derive more from weapon or item. Java does not support multiple inheritance, so if you're familiar with that from C++, that does not exist here. A few things to keep in mind are Super only takes you up one class. So from Sword, Super will take me up to Weapon. And from Weapon, Super will take me up to Item. And another thing to keep in mind, if you are going to use Super in your constructor, to call the base class constructor, that does have to be the first line of this constructor. So let's test out our classes. We'll move back over to main and let's see if I can create a sword. And we can see that my default constructor works just fine. I've got my default values there. We can see that the inheritance is working fine. Even though sword did not have a display method it has access to the display method from the weapon class. So this is what we called there. We can test out our three argument constructor. We can say this is a black sword, has a damage of 25, or sorry, a value of 25.99 and a damage of 123. And that also works just fine. So there's inheritance in a nutshell.